Hi. I'm Bobby. I am a robot cat. In light of Catherine Joy's recent targeting Miranda Wilking relentlessly, I should like to remind those new to the party, that Catherine Joy has always been this way. Well she pretends to operate out of concern, it appears to those with reasonable thinking skills that Catherine actually operates out of pure jealousy. As the majority of her targets, disguised as, reporting, are attractive and successful women. As a St. Patrick's Day inspired treat for you, here are just some of the attractive and successful women Catherine has targeted in recent years. In both her blog, and on her YouTube channel, Catherine targeted Tati Westbrook for years. She claimed her disdain was due to Tati selling miracle oils. But, the majority of her reporting was mocking Tati's appearance, and even accusing her husband of ending the life of his own mother. These relentless accusations resulted in Tati suing Catherine. The lawsuit was ultimately dismissed due to, jurisdiction, and then later in an attempt to prevent the lawsuit being revisited in Minnesota. They reached a settlement agreement where Catherine Joy gave up information about their former business partner. This remains a developing situation as former partner Clark Swanson recently requested the terms of their settlement. Catherine has had it out for former district attorney, and law commentator, Emily Baker since Emily covered bits of the Tati Westbrook lawsuit. Aside from her many drunken Instagram videos, raging out about the lawyer. She is also accused Emily of practicing without a license, not truly being an attorney, and mocked her for everything from her channel format to her appearance. As Emily's channel grew, Catherine only continued her relentless attacks. Here is just a snippet of Catherine's professionalism. She's been derogatory to me. She's laughing that I blocked her. And then she's putting up content on there as though it's fact, and it's not fact. My Twitter is open, and that's not true, so you're going away. Um, are you literally shag along saying that's sus and you're like, what, 50? That's not, that's not a cute look. Emily is defaming me. And if Emily wants to continue to work with the lawyers on the opposing side and only present one side of evidence and then assume that everything that about me is true and factual, she is defaming me. And Emily is it's against the it's a violation of YouTube to go up on your channel and to defame and discredit and try to pummel somebody else. And because of her videos, I am losing subscribers. So if she wants to continue doing this, I make more money on her on YouTube than she does. So, you know, like her and the attorney in this case should not be going to a YouTube attorney and dropping information that's not part of their case. Do you know the entire video that she put up yesterday? None of that was filed in court. Absolutely none of it. That response that she posted in her video last night, I am their content. That response that Emily put up on her channel, that's not filed in court. You can go and look up the court case. Go look in the court case in LA Superior Court. What she said and what she shared were not court documents. They were probably discussions between attorneys before the lawsuit happened. I can put a cease and desist on her, and I'm asking her to cease and desist. LB is a YouTube commentary channel that covers mostly reality television. For a time Catherine and she had an on-again off-again acquaintance due to their respective content. The two have suffered many kerfuffles, the most notable and comedic instance was Catherine's raging jealousy over former teen mom star Matt Byer. But, some of their kerfuffles were not funny at all. From fake screenshots, allegedly, to someone reporting L. B for possessing illegal substances. Resulting in her arrest which her name was later cleared. The situation only got darker. At a point she even paid for the YouTuber's financial records and blasted them all over the internet. Proving yet again that this is a pattern for Catherine Joy. On some serious 
serious debt. They had some serious debt they were behind on. And um, if they weren't current on that debt, they were going to lose their vehicle. And right at the end of November, after not making payments on the vehicle for months, they suddenly make a payment, like a really big payment, over $1,000 on this vehicle. And it was on December 5th that the uh, company that owns the debt and the car said they wanna repossess it because they were so far behind. So um, I have court documents that show that on December 5th, the car company put in a request to repossess the vehicle and then a response by them that states that they made a humongous payment uh, in the end of November and they are asking that the, the vehicle not be re repossessed because they were able to make a payment at the end of November. Now you figure out what happened in the end of November. Just do your little deductive reasoning. I'm not saying that that's what was happening, but it definitely looks like there could be some circumstantial evidence pointing to the fact that maybe the people that held the fundraiser were behind on debt and realizing that they could pin something on me had this fundraiser and said it was about the kids, but it was really about a truck that was about to be repossessed. And if they didn't make the payment, they were going to lose it. Catherine Joy used to speak out on vaccinations. Well, some of her information was accurate. The true issue was she would target specifically women. And, as we are seeing here attractive women. She took special interest in Kat Von D. And, as opposed to professionally sticking to the facts she took to mock in Kat for her appearance and lifestyle. Giving her the title Kat Von Disease. <laughs> Kat Van Measles. I am not a... Hey everybody, it's Kat Van D. I'm going to put on my cruelty-free, makeup-free... Do, uh, animal free, uh, we don't test on baby mice, we, we don't even use beetles, all of these come from, I, I actually graze all of the plums and I make these colors myself through my own squishing thing. Go, I've made all of these pressed pigments on my own, I am Kat Van D. <laughs> I am not an anti-vaxxer. I will never talk about this on the on YouTube again. I am also not a racist. I have lots of Jewish friends and I cannot be racist because I am Latina. That was the weirdest thing she literally ever said was I can't be racist because I'm a Latina. I was like, oh, you can't? That's interesting. Catherine Joy has always had a go at the Duggar girls. Most specifically Jill. When it suits Catherine, she will speak kindly of Derek and Jill. But the reality is that even before she could pronounce the word Duggar, she has been mocking and having a go at her. Least favorite of the girls. I hate Jill. Girls, I hate Jill. I hate her so much. Because she's married to Derek. And Derek's such a... Ugh. Catherine made it no secret that she considered Amy King a friend. She wore and promoted her terrible clothing, went on streams with her and her husband, and professed her love for her across the internet. However, the moment the two fell out, much like the situation with L. B. Catherine turned on her, setting a narrative that Amy was a terrible person, and blasting her financials all over. Instagram. When I speak to and saying that I'm a liar when I didn't lie, she's the one that lied. And you guys, she's going through some serious shit right now. <laughs> they owe so much money. Like, she knows that. She owes money in taxes for her commercial properties that they haven't paid in three years. My dear viewers, there have been many more. Trisha Paters, Britney Spears, Kim Kardashian, The Sister Wives, Cheryl's World, and a host of others. It is vital that we continue to remind her new viewers of her true intentions. It is my opinion that her content is based solely on two things, jealousy and money. 
Catherine Joy takes the term, green with envy, to an entirely new level. Cheers.